We know that they have passed the $1.9 trillion stimulus package. But what would shock most people is that the $1.9 trillion isn't all stimmy checks. Not even close. When you break down what or where the money is actually allocated, which the Wall Street Journal does beautifully, you can see that this really has almost, well, I'm not going to say nothing, but it has very little to do <laughs> with sending people stimmy checks and has almost everything to do with the Cantillon effect, which if you don't know what the Cantillon effect is, it's just the, the idea, the people who are closest to those spending the money or printing the money, have it all go through their back pocket first before it goes out into the real economy. And therefore they can spend the money before that newly created money or newly created spending increases the rate of inflation. So who are these people that benefit from the Cantillon effect? They would be the political insiders and the financial insiders. So banksters, World Economic Forum, politicians, all of our favorite individuals. <laughs> Here's the breakdown of the 1.9 trillion 2021 bill. So first, let's just look at the stimmy checks. That's only 410 billion of the 1.9 trillion. And let's look at what government is getting. Oh, wow, they're getting $360 billion. Hmm, that's weird. I thought this was a Cerveza sickness relief package. Why, why does the government need our relief? <laughs> For what? The government is sending themselves stimmy checks. And notice the government is giving themselves almost as much as they're giving the plebeians and peasants in our society, while the government is getting 360. Other is getting 194 billion. Wow, that's a lot of money for other. <laughs> I wish I was an other, but something tells me the average Joe and Jane is not going to be in this category. Transportation, $56 billion. How? For, I don't like, what, how, what are you spending that on? Agriculture is getting $16 billion. Last time I checked, food prices were going through the roof. I thought the majority of the 1.9 trillion was going to the real economy, quote unquote, and or the average Joe and average Jane. And when you look at the reality of the situation, you see that a larger percentage of the 1.9 trillion is going to things outside of those individuals who will be responsible for actually paying the tax on the money they're spending right now. So in other words, they're going to be responsible for paying the dollars the government is spending right now. They're gonna be responsible for paying the 1.9 trillion, but yet they only get 410 billion of it. Who do I think will pay for the, the stimulus? American citizens will pay for it. You and I will pay for it. Uh, the average Joe and Jane. Now, it might not come out of our back pocket directly in the form of higher taxes, but it will either come out, it will either pay for it one of three ways or, or a combination of all three or a combination of two. Number one would be us just paying higher taxes in the future. Number two would be inflation. Therefore, our purchasing power goes down, which is what Milton Friedman referred to as a hidden tax, because you're moving up in tax, the tax bracket, but yet uh, 
your purchasing power isn't increasing, and uh, your they're they're basically the government is taking wealth from you. Uh, they're extracting wealth from you to pay down their debt, so their debt burden is lower, right? So inflation trying to create inflation, meaning you are having to pay higher goods and prices for consumer goods. Um, at the, so it's a it's detrimental to you and it's beneficial to the government or the, the debtor in this case. So that's a, a way that you or we could pay for it is just higher consumer prices in the future. The third way which is one that most people don't talk about is a distortion in the economy, therefore lower long-term economic growth and a reduced amount of wealth in society at large. So what happens when the government can't do the subsidy anymore? Then your economy crumbles. Same thing in Venezuela. You build the entire economy around the price of oil. What happens when the, oil pri when the price of oil crashes? So do your economy. So what we're doing right now with the United States is the exact same thing. We're building the entire economy around stimulus, government fiscal spending. And I would argue not just government fiscal spending, I would say just checks going in the mail. I mean, I just read an article the other day where uh, Stockton, California has experimented with UBI. And um, I mean, do we really think that stimulus is going to be temporary? Like, like how would that work out? If, if our economy has just got back to the point of uh, where it was prior to the Cervasa sickness, let's say, you know, this is the mainstream economist talking, not George Gammon. But if, if that's the case, then they have to admit it's done so by the government just sending people money to the tune of incomes going up on average by 10% just in the month of January. And if you guys watched the video I did the other day on incomes in 2020, the average income of an American went up by 30%, over 30% from Q1 to Q2 in 2020. Why? Because of all the free, free money that was coming from the government in forms of additional unemployment benefits and just direct stimmy checks.